Okay, so if you're somebody who uses your fingers to cut the perimeter, what you have to realize is that if we're trying to create like that blunt base or that blunt bottom, using your fingers is gonna create elevation. So if I come in here and hold and cut like this, I've already started to create some graduation. So it's not that it's wrong, but what you have to understand is that what's going to be created by the action that you, that you do, right? So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna use the wide tooth portion of my comb, guys, okay? I think that's really important. I use the wide tooth portion of my comb. It gives me very minimal tension. And also, I'm not going to have to worry about over direction as well. Okay? So, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to set my comb. You see, I'm going to be really deliberate with how I comb. Right? One thing we know about the comb, too, is that the comb is always straight. Right? So, we can see if the comb is cockeyed or tilted in a certain way so that we know. Ciao from Rome. I love it. Um, that we know that first cut is going to be nice and clean. All right, so I'm going to come in here. I'm going to set with the wide tooth portion of my comb. And then I'm going to cut directly underneath my comb, right? So by cutting directly underneath my comb, I know that I'm not going to leave any room for error. Because if we come in here, and let's say we cut down here, right? So I open my shear and I cut here. What's going to end up happening is that we're giving space. We're allowing the hair between the comb and where the shear goes in to do whatever it wants to do, right? And we don't want to do that. We want to control that hair. I'm going to comb it straight down from the head, come in here like so, and I'm just going to remove that hair directly underneath my comb. And here we're coming in and we're setting that nice base, guys, right? It's that first section where we really want to get that nice blunt line so that when we have a side profile of this, there's a lot of strength underneath. Belgium, hello, what's up? I've been to Belgium a few times, it's a beautiful place. All right, so I've got my comb set here. I'm using the wide tooth portion and I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna cut directly underneath the comb again. Okay, so now we've set our first perimeter cut. You can see we built a lot of strength. Oh, Sonia, what's up? We've set a lot of strength into that underneath section. So we're gonna come in, I'm gonna take my next section. One thing I want you guys to notice, one thing about sectioning, you see how that hair is already combed out of the way? It's not twisted up and sat on the top of, it, up of, top of the head like that, so then I gotta spend another hour like brushing this hair out, right? Not hour, but say like two minutes, combing it out each time I take a section. If I place my thumb on the back of my comb and that hair is already going in the direction I want, Look how easy it is for me to take my section, right? I think that's really important. What's up, Dolan? I think that's really important is that that hair is already set into the position that I want it to go, right? So again, I'm gonna show you on this side. We come in here, the hair is already combed. Already sectioned. So you can see how much faster I can work through that, right? So I work behind the chair just like you guys. You know, I'm in my salon in Minneapolis. And so I start, you know, working at 9 a.m. and then I don't finish until usually about 9 p.m. And I see about 13 to 17 people a day. And I think that that's really important to understand that everything that I'm teaching you here today, it's used behind the chair, right? I'm using it behind the chair. So this next section, I'm gonna come in and I'm actually gonna drop it just a quarter of an inch under our first section right, or excuse me, over our first section. So we get a small amount of an undercut there. I'm gonna come in, and I'm gonna cut directly underneath my comb again. Now we talked about this just a minute ago. We're cutting directly underneath the comb so that we can ensure that we get a nice solid blunt line so then we can go through and texturize it. So I am using, question here uh, from Rosemary, what are my favorite combs to use? I'm using a YS Park comb. Um, I use pretty much mostly YS Park stuff. I've got YS Park clips, YS Park brush. Um, so the YS Park combs for me are the ones that I like. Um, they just tend to work the best. Next section, I'm gonna come in here. I've got my previously cut section right there, cutting directly underneath my comb and just starting to remove that length, right? So one of the things about a blunt uh, haircut, you know, uh, obviously we're gonna put some texture and some internal texture in here, but when creating a blunt line, it's the easiest thing to theorize, but yet one of the hardest to cut. What is YS? So YS Park is a type of comb, Liz, okay? So it's a type of comb, um, you can find them online, um, yeah. 
and that's the best I can do for you. All right, so we're gonna come in here, cut this side again. I've got my previously cut section as my guide. Remember, we're going about a quarter of an inch below or longer than our originally cut section. So now what we're gonna to start to get is we're gonna to start to get just a really nice solid line, but you can see we've got this slight undercut underneath. We're actually gonna go through and connect that undercut, but we still wanna make sure that we're keeping that strength on the underside, okay? Again, we come back to that talk that we had about sectioning. Look at this section. Already combed in the direction I want, so boom, I can just drop that section down. The hair's already placed where I need it to be, out of my way. And what I'm doing there is I'm just maximizing my time behind the chair, right? And that's one thing that we wanna do and we wanna make sure of that when we're, we're behind the chair, we're actually maximizing our time and our energy so that we can get through as many clients as possible. Because we all know, right, after this COVID situation, the salons are gonna be busy. People are gonna be cramming in to get their hair done. So we wanna make sure that we're, oh, good question. Someone asked, how do we avoid static? Um, you can put a cream on. Sometimes when I'm cutting, I'll take a little bit of that healing oil again, just a small amount in my hand like that. If there's a section that I don't like, and I'll just lightly rub my fingers over the top of it if the static's getting to be a little bit too much for me or a little bit out of control. It's a great way to, uh, a great way to come in and kind of control that static. All right, so you see what happened? That static just dropped down there. The healing oil is so lightweight, it's not going to affect, um, it's not gonna affect uh, the final style that we do. All right, so we're gonna come in here and now we've done two sections blunt, right? So we've done two sections blunt and one was an undercut, right? Can you do this haircut on any type of hair? Yes, so you can do this haircut on any type of hair. The one thing I will say, if the hair is very curly, then you have to be careful, right? Curly hair is gonna be cut slightly differently. Um, and when I say really curly, I mean like an S pattern uh, or a C pattern. That's gonna be cut a little bit differently, but I still would cut it dry. I just don't think if somebody wears their hair curly, I'm not going to cut it straight. I know some people like that. I'm gonna cut it as it lives. So my curly hair clients know that when they come in to wear their hair curly and clean, okay? All right, so my next section, this is gonna be one more blunt section, and this is gonna fall directly on top of that previously cut section. So directly on top of the overcut section that we just cut. And now you can see we're really starting to build this really strong line. One thing you'll notice too is I keep turning my mannequin head. So when we're working and we're cutting hair, one of the things you wanna be sure that you remember is that you want to cut the hair that's sitting in front of you, right? So I'm not contorting my body or bringing hair to me. Um, what scissor am I using, Stefan? Yeah, this is an arc shear right here. Um, I pretty much, you know, I pretty much uh, stick with the arcs. This is a Phantom 2, six inch, okay? That's what I'm using right here. Um, so when I come through here, I've got this hair directly in front of me and I can see what I'm doing, okay? I'm working between my chest and my eyes. So I'm not working like down at my stomach. You know, I educate a lot all over the world and that's something that I see where people will come in and they'll turn the hair to them to see. And that's the one thing about that, when you turn that hair so that you can see it, what you start to do is you actually start to layer the hair because you're cutting the hair shorter on top and leaving it longer underneath, right? So, can you do a video on how to fade, Mary? Yeah, I could do a video on how to fade, no problem. I faded, I faded my own hair the last time I cut it. Um, so yeah, I could probably do that for you. All right, so. Like I was saying, so if we take this hair and we twist it like this, okay? So if we bring it to us, you guys see that? You guys see that bend in the hair when I do that? A lot of people do that and they hold it. Um, what you're doing is the top section of that hair, you're actually gonna cut it a little bit shorter. So you're gonna start to create layers and you're gonna start to get a little flip out of the bob instead of having it lay straight. Uh, question, do I always cut dry hair? I will say this, I don't always do anything, but if I can cut hair dry, I will. Right, so there's not an always, um, you know, every time kind of thing in my opinion. I think you, every situation is treated differently, but I will um, tell you that if I can cut hair dry, I, I do. Yep. And then the, another question was, is this a dry cutting shear? So 
you know, I'm not the firmest believer in like a dry shear, wet shear type situation. If I find a shear and I like it, I use it. That's what I would say. So if I find a shear and I like it, I use it. I'm not going to go for the dry, wet, dry, wet kind of shear. This is the shear I use. I use it for everything. I love it. It's a little bit thinner blade, which I like because it allows me to get around, you know, around my client. It allows me to get in tight spaces. Good question. Kimberly, would I stand my client up for this or would I have her sit down? Um, typically, I, so currently I'm sitting down. I'm sitting down too. So um, I will cut that, uh, cut it with the client sitting down and then I will sit down and roll around them. So that's how I like to do it. If I'm cutting the perimeter of long hair, then I will have them stand up. How do we deal with shoulders in a cut like this? That's a good question. So, you know, obviously right now I'm cutting it to, you know, about an inch below her hairline. So shoulders are a non-issue. If you're cutting it to that space that sits directly on top of the shoulder, you know, you're really gonna only struggle when you get to the sides, right? And in that situation, I'll show you exactly how I would handle it. All right, so the question is again, how do you deal with shoulders with this? So if I'm the client and I'm sitting like this and I have hair brushing against the shoulder, I'm going to the face, turn her head like this and I'll have my guideline here and I'll cut directly off my guideline in front of her. Does that answer the question? Yeah? All right. Okay, so here we're gonna come, now we're gonna come on this top section and like that question earlier, what do you do about static that you don't like? Again, I'll just take a little bit of my healing oil, lightly dust it over the top. You know, the salon's dry, it's crazy because it hasn't been used, right? People haven't been in here and stuff, so, so it's dry, the salon is drying up. How do you correct or cross check? Good question. So I'm a firm believer. I got to tell you guys, like I'm not the biggest cross checker because I plan my work and work my plan. So I know that this is going to work whether on, you know, Sally, Julie, Amy, because I know my, I plan my work and work my plan. Right. And I think that that's super important. Um, it's tried and tested for me. I use it a lot. And you can see I'm very systematic when I, when I cut hair. And I think that that's really important. If you're just grabbing hair, cutting it, taking rando bits, cutting it, that's when you have to go through and correct. But if you're systematically working your way through, then you're fine. Yeah, I know, I hear, about, hear you about the humidifier, but typically we don't have a problem with static in my salon at all. It's just the fact that we've been shut down. Work that plan, Jason. That's right, my man, work that plan. All right, so we're gonna come in and now we're gonna take our last section and our last section we're actually gonna come in here, we're gonna use our fingers. We talked about this earlier on, right? When we use our fingers, what are we creating? Can anyone type it in the comments? So if we start using our fingers, what are we going to create in this perimeter? Anyone? Anyone tell me? Can anyone tell me? If we start using our fingers to cut this perimeter, we're creating something. No, we're not creating layers. Well, we could, but we're not currently, right? Graduation, Liz, two points for Liz. Good job, Liz. We're creating graduation, right? So now there's a few different types of graduation you can create. If I come through here and I'm holding this hair horizontally and I'm creating horizontal graduation, am I gonna make the strongest form of graduation or am I gonna make the softest form of graduation when I do horizontal graduation? Type it in the comments, guys. Let me see, let me see. Is horizontal graduation the strongest or the softest type of graduation? That's right, Julie Apple, graduation. Come on, what do you got? Is it the strongest form of graduation or the softest form of graduation when we use our fingers and we cut horizontally? Manjula, soft. Manjula says soft. Graduation, a bend, the hair is equal layers, yes. If I come in here and I hold this hair horizontally, I am actually creating the strongest form of graduation, right? Vertical graduation is gonna be your softest form. Very good, Sandra. 
Vertical graduation is going to be your softest form of graduation. Horizontal is going to be your strongest form of graduation. And then you've got diagonal graduation, and that falls in between at whatever you choose to take your diagonal at, okay? So we're putting in very, very strong graduation, which means we're not going to get you know, a lot of graduation. We're taking this basically about a three fingers length away from her neck, okay? Three fingers, right? So three fingers away from her neck and we're cutting it. All that's doing, that's right, Don. It's, horizontal, it's not horizontal texturizing, it's horizontal graduation. So it just creates a very, very soft bevel, right? So that it doesn't just sit straight, okay? But no matter what, okay, Branimer, Branimer, is that your name? Anyway, good. It says, depends on the elevation. So yes, but no, because if I cut that hair horizontally, it's always going to have the strongest line compared to cutting it vertically. Because if I elevate it past 89 degrees, then all of a sudden I'm layering. So it's no longer graduation, right? Does that make sense? It's no longer graduation. So in order to keep it in graduation, Horizontal lines are gonna be the strongest. Uh, yes, okay, I have Brandon Moore, let's see, here we go. Horizontal with high elevation is soft. Correct, it's soft, but it's not as soft as vertical graduation. And if I take high elevation, for example, high elevation like this, that's over 90 degrees, so I've done layered it now, right? So I can only take it out to 90. If I cut 90 horizontally compared to 90 vertically, it's gonna be softer vertical. All right, so next section. So now we're gonna turn her and we're gonna work on one of the sides, guys, okay? So you see, we've got that side all set up. Hey, from New Zealand, what's up, New Zealand? All right, I'm gonna take my section, drop it here. Remember, we're gonna take this hair that we're not using, gonna comb it away, but we're gonna comb it in the direction, Croatia, what's up? We're gonna comb it in the direction that our sections are gonna be taken. So that way, we're set and safe. All right, so we're gonna come in here. I've got my previously cut guide. Can you all see that? And then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna cut directly underneath my comb and just start removing that hair. Now, this entire side that we cut here we're gonna cut all with our comb at zero degrees because we wanna create as much strength as possible. Why wouldn't we want to graduate the section on the side, right? Why wouldn't we wanna graduate that like we did in the back with our horizontal graduation on that top section? India, what's up, man? Welcome. Anyone tell me, post it, post it in the comments. Why wouldn't we want to come into that top and do one section of horizontal graduation just like we did in the rest? No, I don't, good question, Melissa. Do I tilt the head away from me? No, I keep their head living. Less hair, Katrina answered the question. There's, <coughs> excuse me, there's less hair here, right? Because if you notice, the hair goes all the way down to here but stops here, good job, Katrina. Deb, all you guys got that one, it's too weak. Yes, I'm still using the wide tooth of the comb. Um, Oh shoot, I forgot the question that I was answering right there. Um, hmm. Oh well, it'll come back to me. Sorry that I missed out on one. Okay, so we're gonna come in here. Next section. Wide tooth portion of the comb. We're gonna cut all the way, you can see this, to the front hairline. Now this hair right here, this hair goes in front of her face, right? So this hair, oh, hold on, I'm gonna take a step back. Why I don't tilt the head away from me? I like to keep the head straight up and down because that's the way that she lives. So then I know when I'm going through and I'm cutting that this is her haircut is going to look like that on a daily basis. So I cut where hair lives, okay? So now we've got this hair that comes to the front. You guys see that? It comes over her side hairline. So with that, that part, just to make sure that we get complete control, I'm gonna bring it back and I'm gonna hold it in my fingers, okay? Now, we could come through 
and try and use our, our, just our comb, which I do sometimes. But the reality is, is that we have more control if we're using our fingers right here on this hair that will very easily sway back and forth for us, okay? So I'm gonna come in there and I'm just gonna take that front section and remove it. All right, so now we've started to create our nice solid line. You'll notice it's a very, 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 very slight A-line just because this hair gets over-directed to the side, okay? So nothing, we're not trying to create any strong A-line or anything like that. We're just trying to create that little bit of over-direction to salvage that length because then when you look at her from the front and the hair pushes over there, it looks nice and straight. Okay, now we're gonna work on the other side. All right, so. Remember, take our section, hair that's out of the section, gets combed in the direction that we're going to be taking our section. So we take our sections back to front. So this way, that hair is already set up for us to make our next section. Because what we're doing here is we're maximizing our time behind the chair. Because if you think about it, I mean, how many of you guys out there, now be honest, right? Be honest, type it in there. How many of you guys just twist the hair up like this and put a clip in it? How many of you guys do that? Put it in the, put it in the comments, don't sweat it, don't sweat it. The parting's in the middle, Jeanette. But how many of you guys clip your hair away like this, right? Okay, you do that, you're gonna have to spend more time coming in here combing it out, getting it smooth, and then getting ready to take the next section instead of just sectioning and dropping, right? And one of the things, you know, there's a guilty, I like it, Casey, I like the honesty. One of the things, you know, that you have to realize about, you know, being behind the chair, and you guys should notice this because of all the great education that you've gotten from Hairbrained and, and all these other great companies, you know, over this crazy time, there's a lot of amazing hair cutters out here, right? There's a lot of amazing hair cutters in the world. And so one of the things that you need to do when you're, when you're sitting behind the chair is you need to create a perception of yourself, right? You need, to, you, need to be, you need to create that perception that you are in more control than the stylist down the street. And that's why people are gonna continue to come to you. Everything that you do behind the chair is about the perception of who you are. Remember, we're not selling haircuts, we're selling confidence, right? Confidence in how they look and confidence in you. All right, so, we're gonna take our next section. We've got our wide tooth portion of our comb. And notice how when I go through, here's another thing I wanna talk about. When I go through, I comb one time. You guys see that? So watch, when we come in here. Okay, so the hair is down. I go slow and steady. Here we come, watch. Boom. One time. I get the hair in place. Slow and steady, wins that race. How many of you do this? Like all you see, like it's like the combing Olympics. What's up, Germany, right? It's the combing Olympics and you keep combing and then you recomb and then you recomb, right? So when you're combing and doing all those things, I'm telling you, what you wanna make sure that you do, you're, again, you're wasting time, right? So all I wanna do is be nice and smooth with everything, one comb, do it right the first time so that you don't have to continually go back and forth, back and forth, okay? So we're taking this next section. You guys can see, remember this is that section of hair that sits in front of the hairline that we talked about, how we're gonna grab it and slightly over direct it back to the side portion of the hairline. That's what gives us that small little A-line, okay? Boom. I bring her back around, facing you guys. And if you look at that, perfect. We've got ourselves a perfect bob without cross-checking. You like that combing Olympics? Yeah, I see it all the time. And I see back combing Olympics too. You guys ever see that? You know you've got somebody in the salon, right? When they back comb or when, I, when I'm teaching classes, they're coming in and it's like this as fast as they can. And by the time they're done doing it, there's like sweat dripping down their forearms and everything like that. Well, you know, same thing with back combing. Back combing is just nice, smooth, slow little motions. You're gonna get a nice solid pack Everything's gonna be good. All right, so bring her back. All right, so now we've created the foundation and now we have to go in and we have to do 
basically, uh, uh, someone said it earlier, we have to go in and do kind of our lived in look, right? So how do we now make this lived in, but maintaining this strong perimeter? I see a lot of people, when they start on these bobs, let's get her face so she can see everyone. She's feeling a little bit hot in there. Okay, when she, I see a lot of people, when, when they go in, the first thing they do is they hit this top, right? Boom, they lift it up and they cut it straight off with a point cut maybe even, right? Sometimes they'll do it with a point cut to say that it's being textured, but they're gonna cut this horizontal line on top. What ends up happening when you do that is you start to create, immediately create this kind of like strong layer, pop the top, and you lose the shape that sits with all this heaviness right here, okay? So, we're gonna actually start on the underside. Remember I told you we were gonna come in and we were going to connect. We're gonna connect that under uh, undercut. So I'm gonna come in. And take this first section. Now my first section here when I do this is basically gonna sit about an inch above the occipital bone, okay guys? So it's gonna sit an inch above the occipital. Like so, okay? Now I'm gonna comb this hair straight up. Now when I comb this hair straight up, what am I doing? I'm over directing, right? So by over directing, we're salvaging all that length at the bottom. I'm gonna come in here and just do some soft point cuts, okay? <coughs> Next section. Now I'm actually gonna take this section and I'm gonna square it off to the back of her head. So I'm not moving around the back of her head. That's gonna salvage even more length that sits right behind the ear, okay? Coming in, boom, 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 boom. Point cut, be done. Same thing over here. I'm gonna square off this section to the back so that hair that sits right behind the ear is getting a slight over direction. I'm gonna come in here, boom, 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 and just hit it with some point cuts. Real deliberate, I'm not going through and creating a bunch of, a bunch of point cuts to make another straight line, okay? I'm actually coming in and cutting peaks and valleys, which in turn is gonna create some real texture, okay? So now, we got that under section, so now we're gonna move to the top, right? Okay, so, got our lovely lady. First client since COVID, here we are, we're back, we're in the salon, we're loving life. Okay, I'm gonna move her just a smidge closer. Oh, that's too close. There we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna take a one inch section, okay? A one inch section, I'm gonna comb it straight up off the top of her head, and I'm gonna point my fingertips straight down, and I'm gonna raise the back of my hand straight up. So you can see how vertical we're taking this. Come in, and just give it a nice little point cut. We're basically just cutting off that tiny little top tip. That's gonna give it a little bit of movement, but it's not going to affect the overall shape. If we come in here and we go like this, boom, 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 we're going to affect the overall shape because look at that. See that line? What that's telling me, how it's angling like that, is that there's gonna be a lot of strength underneath. Oh, that's a good question. How long is it gonna take me to be a good hairstylist? I just started a year ago. Edgar, listen, man. Practice, practice, practice. I started I start working for my parents. My parents owned a hair salon, um, and I started working for them when I was 18. When you're starting off, there's not much to do. And I literally sat at my station and I blew dry hair for hours just to understand how hair worked. And I'll tell you this, if you style hair well, you are going to be busier, faster behind the chair than if you cut hair well. That's just a reality because people wanna look in the mirror when they're done and they wanna feel fantastic. So I've seen a lot of people who can't cut hair the best but style hair like crazy, super busy. And then I see a lot of people who can cut the lights out but can't style hair, not as busy. So practice styling and everything else, but really focus on that styling right now, and you'll notice your, yourself get busier behind the chair right here. All right, so we're gonna take another one inch section. I'm gonna comb this. 
Straight up, just like we did the last one. Fingers point down, heel of the hand goes straight up, and we just come in and take a point cut. And we're gonna work these sections, these one inch sections, all the way around the head, okay? So we're gonna come in here, boom. Fingers go down, heel goes up. Come in, next section, one inch section. And you can see, even when we're coming in, so this is basically would be considered, I mean, you can consider it layering, uh, you can consider it texturizing, whatever you want. But if you'll notice, like we talked about earlier, still very systematic in the approach, right? So we're working through this haircut very systematically. And that, my friends, is, ooh, sorry. She got excited about her haircut. Um, that, my friends, is what's really going to keep you, keep you going and keep you kind of like on point in your haircut so you don't get lost. Yes, one inch. One inch pie shaped sections. Sandra, good job. One inch pie shaped subsections. Next section, okay? And you'll notice my body position as well. So when I am on her left, I'm trailing the section. When I am on her right, I am in front of the section. That's gonna allow me to put my hands in the proper place. There we go. Next section, one inch pie shaped section. Pull that hair straight up, boom. You see I'm leading this section, so that means I'm in front of the section. On the other side, I was behind the section. All right, last section here. I'm gonna pull this straight up and just cut that off. All right, so now, take her off here real quick. Shake her out just to get the loose bits out. Now, you can start to see we're creating some shape inside of here. We're creating this really kind of like cool instagram lived lived-in bob, but we haven't disrupted the structure. And I think that that is something that's super important, guys. We're not disrupting that, that line down here. That line is looking really strong, so she's, she's got herself in a good place. So now, what we've left out is basically the densest portion of the hair, right? And, it, and no matter if your hair is thick, thin, whatever, the densest portion sits between the round of the head, right, the parietal ridge, and the occipital bone. So that's where the densest portion of anyone's hair is going to be for the most part, unless they have like an alopecia uh, of some sort, okay? So we're going to come in here. Again, we're going to work with these one-inch pie-shaped subsections, and I'm going to use a little technique that I found from a friend of mine. Her name, if you check her out on Instagram, she cuts amazing bobs, uh, styled by Carolyn. And this is a technique that she uses that she taught me that's pretty fantastic. Um, just because I really like when you get into these shorter bobs, the bobs that are sitting like, you know, about an inch below the hairline, it's just a really great technique to create texture without over texturizing. Um, so we're gonna come in here and we're gonna use, basically we're just gonna use the tips of our shears, okay? So the shear's only gonna open that much, but we're gonna close it on the way out. So we're not slide cutting. One of the things about slide cutting is that it can be really aggressive, right? We can really shred hair. And one of the things about hair right now that is so popular is that everyone wants healthy hair. I think that's something that's, you know, extremely important. And so I'm gonna come in here, just use the tip of the shear, and I'm just gonna work away some of that hair just to create some texture, but not remove all the length, right? That's the one thing, I don't wanna go in here and start removing tons of length and then losing my shape. And so this allows me to get a little bit deep, but still maintain all that length on the printer, okay? And again, you can see we're texturizing, right? We talked about this, we're going through, we're texturizing. But one thing that we're doing is we're making sure that we're doing it systematically, okay? So I'm coming in here, I got my one inch pie shaped, pie -shaped subsections, and just working myself around her head. You know, a lot of times when you see people texturize, what you see is you see kind of just, let's just grab random sections, right? And you're talking to your client and maybe over here, you know, you're talking about, oh, you know, the strawberries at Whole Foods were beautiful, blah, blah, blah. And then maybe over here you start talking about your kids, your boyfriend, your husband, and what they've been doing and how they've been annoying you. And then the next time they come in, they're like, oh, I love my haircut. I just feel like maybe I grow more hair on this side than I do on this side because it's just a little thicker, right? But no, it's not necessarily. 
Good question. How deep do you texture? Two inch maybe? I'll go, the, the most you can texture, the deepest you can go is halfway down the hair shaft. So let's say this hair is seven inches long. I could go in three and a half if I wanted to, okay? Um, I personally am keeping it currently, you're right, roughly about two inches away from the ends, okay? And that becomes my guideline. The ends of her hair become my guideline, okay? So I'm gonna come in here, slightly work that hair, just to remove some of that denseness. Oh, thanks, Tara. You're awesome too, I appreciate it. All right, next section, coming in. And again, we're working these pie-shaped subsections all the way around the head. And by doing that, by staying systematic in our approach, right, and understanding, you know, the result of the action, right? So one of the biggest things about haircutting, you know, haircutting can freak people out, but it's, it's pretty simple, you know, there's, there's only a few haircuts you can cut and the rest is kind of like window dressing. It's like building a house. You can cut a blunt haircut, a graduated haircut, a short layered haircut, a long layered haircut, disconnection, boom. Like those are your, you know, your core foundations for your haircuts. And then everything else is like window dressing. So if you systematically window dress, you're gonna get a nice even kind of longevity haircut. And I think that's one of the things that's really important. I like my clients to come in, you know, if I can on the 12, 12 to 14 week status, because if you can keep your clients rolling out 12 to 14 weeks, you grow a really large book of people, okay? If your clients come in every four to six weeks, what happens is your book gets smaller. And so when Sally decides to go to somebody else or Sally gets a gift card from somebody or Sally's friend, you know, goes to somebody else so then Sally goes and tries it, you miss Sally because Sally's every four week paycheck for you, right, a payday for you. If you have your book spread 12 to 14 weeks per client, you don't even remember Sally. You know, and I don't mean that disrespectfully, but it's like, Sally who? Because you, your book has gotten so large of the clients that you've had, you're able to control your money. And so you basically end up creating a salary as opposed to commission for yourself. Because you know how many clients, you know, you've got this huge book of clients, so you don't have to worry about how much money you're gonna be making. Okay, so now we're gonna do a little fringe. Now just, can you use a texturizing shear and get the same result? Susan, that's a good question. I am not a big texturizing shear user. Um, I know I've got some friends like Chris Jones, he's really great with his texturizing shears and a few other people. Personally, myself, just not a texturizing shear guy, I would rather use my straight shear. So one thing to say there, I'm just not a big texturizing shear guy. All right, so we're gonna put in a little bit of fringe on our lovely model here. And one of the things, you know, when you're cutting a fringe, I think is really important is just to remember your sectioning. Your sectioning is hugely important when creating a fringe. And so you never wanna go wider than the side hairline, okay? So let me show you this right here. Uh, you guys can't see that, so maybe if I bring her here. Okay, so I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna take my parting, and that parting, now mannequins are a little different, right? Because they really don't have a super, you know, strong hairline right here, but a lot of people, it curves, comes back, and then goes back in, right? And so you never want to go wider than where this hair down here, the recession sits when you're cutting your fringe, okay? All right, so I'm taking my first section here, or my, sec my section of fringe, I should say. Looks good and even. I'm also gonna work on a triangle, so if I tilt her head forward, like so, you can see that that triangle, the tip of that triangle is gonna sit to where the hair starts to round, okay? Um, that's one of the biggest things. All right, Johnny, that's good. Now, listen, so we're gonna take this next section right here, boom. This is gonna be our, the start of our fringe, okay? I'm just gonna set that clip in there. Take another small triangle over here. So this is gonna be kind of like our fringe guideline, if you will, okay? Um, one of the things I also tell you guys, I'm a firm believer, I do free bang trims. Um, I'm a pretty busy stylist behind the chair, like I said, I don't, well, currently I'm not taking appointments, but uh, just kidding, um, not because of, oh, from Namibia, nice. That's amazing, welcome. Welcome, Christelle. Um, so, yeah, so I, I do free bang trims. I think it's more important to cut the bangs or the fringe to be 
the length that makes it look great not to grow out, right? So that's one of the things that I think is really important. How do you part the fringe if she wears a side part? The part, so that's a good question. How do I part this fringe if her part is on the side? The tip of that triangle would be on the side. So wherever that part sits, if she's very strong with her part, the tip of that triangle goes there. So you could end up with almost like a right triangle and not this like typical, you know, isosceles triangle. Okay. Um, so again, that, that part dictates, you know, where you put the tip of the triangle. Uh, would I use a straight razor to cut a fringe? I will only use a straight razor if the hair permits. And I'm not going to use a straight razor on dry hair. So to answer that question, um, yeah, if this was wet and her hair permitted, which is a very small amount of people that actually allow you to not allow you to use a, a razor, but their hair allows you to use a razor. There's a very small amount of people. And so I think that that's really important is that you know the hair type before you rock and roll on a razor. Okay. So we've got our section. Where do I want that fringe to fall? I'm going to say I want it to fall at the bridge of the nose. So again, I'm just going to come in here and just kind of remove some of that hair that sits right in the middle. I'm going to go basically about to the corner of her eyeball. Okay. So I want it to go to that inside corner of the eye where I come in and just set my straight guideline. Okay. Next, I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to slightly angle my, my fingers. You see that slight angle in my fingers? I'm going to come in here and I'm going to point cut this like so, just to start to give me a little bit of guide. Now, like when you're cutting anything, okay, does, well, let me ask you this. I'm going to ask you a question. So I want this to go in the comments, so get ready. All right, guys, does the elevation at which we cut our fringe, does that matter? Does the elevation where we cut the fringe matter? Can anyone tell me? We'll give you guys just a second to answer that question. I'll make sure these are perfect. There we go. Does the elevation matter? Who's gonna write a comment? Let's go. Absolutely, Sandra, absolutely. So just like when we're cutting the perimeter, the closer we are to zero, what happens? It's stronger. It's a more blunt fringe. The more we raise and elevate, the softer. So just like graduation, just like layering, it matters. So a lot of times when I see people cutting a fringe, you'll see them Maybe this side they'll cut down here, but then maybe this side, they don't want to necessarily move. So then they'll elevate it and start cutting it up here because it's easier for them to see or something like that, right? It matters. Each side needs to be cut the same way. So if you're going to keep it at zero on that beginning, keep it at zero, okay? Or as close to zero as you, as you can. All right, so then we're going to take our next section. Come in here, another just angled section. Now watch what we're gonna do, guys. We're gonna take this, and we're gonna elevate it. I'm gonna elevate it straight up. So what is that gonna do? Soft, right? So this is gonna make it a much softer fringe. So I'm gonna come in here, elevate it straight up. We're going to start to basically layer that fringe, if you will. Next section, drop it down. We'll comb it straight up. Just like we did our last section. I've got my previously cut guide here. You guys can all see that. I'm going to come in. I'm going to remove that with a point cut. Just work that section until I see the kind of texture I want to see on the ends. Drop that down. And then I've started to create a really nice, soft fringe on her, right? So when we go through and stop, oops, I should turn it down. There you go. And so now also too, if she pulls her hair back, look at that. 
See how she's got those nice little bits right here? That's going to be really nice and great for her when she pulls her hair back. One of those things that a lot of people talk about. They want a little bit something cool, right? Okay, next section. I'm going to take a diagonal section here. Now, what's going to be the best way for you guys to see this? Comb that hair straight up. You guys see that? No? Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do this. I'll still be able to see it. How's that, better? Yeah. Okay, so next section, I'm gonna comb it straight up. Start to remove that with a nice point cut. Drop the final section. Again, we're gonna comb this straight up. Just gonna remove that again with our point cut. And then we're starting to create just this really nice, soft, kind of like lived in shape around the face. So when we go through and style it in a minute, we're gonna have a really cool look. So, that's about it. Now, if I wanted to add just a little bit of volume at the base, right? You, are you 90 off the head shape? I am 90 off the head shape, Garrett, when I'm cutting the fringe. So I'm coming straight up and down, just like we did the layers on the top, 90 off the head, okay? Um, if you're somebody that likes to add a little bit of volume or you got clients that, that like to get a little bit of volume, like in the crown or whatever, just to get a little bit of movement, I'll take this hair, I'll flip it over the top and then I just do like a light graze through there. I'm keeping my shear exactly parallel, right? So you can see when we come in, we just get little bits of hair out like that. The shear is totally 100% parallel with the hair that it's going into. If you bring it in a diagonal, it's going to get very aggressive. And so we're just going to come in here. This is how I like to get a little bit of volume, just really softly, remove a little bit of hair, just like that. And basically it looks like, you know, it looks like it could be tougher than it is. So I just want to show you guys. Basically you're just saying hello. Hi. Hi. That's all you're doing with your hands, okay? Boom, 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 boom. All right? Yeah, I did say my shear was ARC, Megan. This is the ARC Phantom 2 that I'm using today. Okay, so now, we have gone through, we've given her a really nice, kind of like lived in, you know, layer haircut, if you will. Shake her out. She's having a good time. And it's making that color look even better now too. Look at that color, it looks so nice. Um, so on her color, guys, I did some balayage with Lanza Decolorizer 20 volume. That was toned with our healing color um, trans translucent. I used a 9P and a 9NV to tone the blondes. And then I went through and I did a 6P um, uh, shadow root with the liquids. So her shadow root is a 6P with the liquids. All right, so now I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna do just a little bit of styling on her. Um, this is something that I do in the salon a lot. People wanna have that like nice little, you know, lived in bob, if you will. So I'm gonna take my flat iron, sorry about that, arm. Take my flat iron. So I like a GHD flat iron. Uh, she's seen some miles, she's been to a lot of shows and she's still holding up well. I'm gonna take my first section. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna just lightly close the iron. I'm gonna twist it away. Then I'm gonna twist the bottom towards. Then I'm gonna twist the bottom away, right? And I'm just gonna to start to create a little bit of movement inside my bob, right? So I'm gonna take my next section. My sections again, they're a little bit under an inch. So I would say they're about three quarters of an inch. I'm gonna take my next section, the bottom of the iron goes away, the bottom of the iron comes back towards me, away, and then I just kind of like rock it through there just to start to give it a little bit of movement and start to create a little bit different shape, you know, that I, than what we typically see out there because a lot of times, you know, we're using our curling irons and things like that, which are great. I use it frequently. Um, sometimes when the bob gets a little bit shorter like this, I find that the flat iron gives me a little bit better movement. Now remember, the more rocks you take with the flat iron, 
changes the texture, right? So however many times we rock that flat iron, it's gonna change the texture in which you know, our final outcome is. I'm gonna take this hair right here and I'm gonna treat it kind of like curling iron, if you will, in the fringe. I'm just gonna grab it. Grab this little section. The iron comes up and then I just roll it away from her face. You can see then where she starts to get that nice little curtain shape in her fringe. Next section. Now what, this is really important. Sometimes when we get to the top, we have like just a little bit bigger section than what we have been taking, okay? So what we wanna do is cut that section in half. Don't take the bigger section, okay? That's one of the mistakes people make. Don't just take that last section and make it bigger. That last section is the important section. That last section is the one that sits on top of her hair and the one that she is gonna be looking at when she walks out, right? So coming in. I made that section a little bit smaller. And again, I'm just rocking that iron. One thing I like to say, that first section, I like continually rocking away from me, um, the, bottom, the bottom of the iron. The reason is because it gives it a little bit of volume, right? So I wanna make sure that I'm just creating that little bit of lift at the base. If you go and start rocking it the other way first, what's gonna end up happening is that that hair is gonna lay a little flatter, okay? And we don't want that hair to lay flat, we want that hair, typically most people want a little bit of lift off the scalp. So that's why I like just twisting that bottom of that flat iron away from me at the beginning. I'm gonna grab this other piece of fringe that we have here, and I'm just gonna roll it through the iron. Yeah, she's looking great, okay? So now we're gonna go and we're gonna do the other side. We're not gonna work ourselves around the head, we're gonna come over to the other side. The reason that we're gonna do that is because two things change the way hair sit, heat and water, okay? And so currently, this side of her hair is hot. If I work myself all the way around, and this is the last side that I do, when I go put my product in and shake it out, what's gonna end up happening is that this side is not gonna have cooled down yet. And so you're gonna have this really juged, beautiful side, and then this side is gonna be droopy, right? It's gonna look like a two-year-old that lost his balloon at his birthday party, okay? So we wanna make sure that we get this side to cool too. Remember, two things change the way hair sit, heat and water. And so that goes into like styling hair too, guys. If you do a lot of styles in the hair salon, let's say you are, like to do updos or event styles and all that kind of jazz, if you work really hard at trying to create all this volume and then you choose a hairspray that is wet to finish it off, what you're gonna notice is a lot of that work that you put in on that volume is then just gonna die, right? So it's just gonna go away. So you wanna make sure that you choose a strong hold hairspray that is not wet. And I think that's one of the biggest things that's hard to find out there is a hairspray that works really well that isn't wet, okay? And so you'll notice um, some of the hairsprays that I choose today, um, I'm gonna choose one that is not wet. So all this work that we're doing to create these beautiful, cool waves is not gonna be lost on, you know, because the hair gets damp from the product selection that we make. So, and again, like we talked about guys, you know, there's nothing worse than for me or sad, sadder, more sad for me and having a first time client that comes in and when I'm done telling me that this is the first time that they feel like they haven't had to go home and restyle their hair. You guys hear that in the salon, right? Like you get a first time client, they're like, oh my God, <clears throat> this is the first time I feel like I don't have to go home and restyle my hair, right? Well, you know, again, I talked about this earlier. It's all fine and dandy, you know, we wanna be good at what we do, we wanna do good color, we wanna do good haircuts, we wanna do all that awesome stuff. But I will tell you this, if you are not selling confidence to your clients, then your client, you are not going to have a huge clientele. And it's gonna be much harder for you to be a busy stylist behind the chair. You are selling confidence, right? So that confidence stems from what the client feels like when they're walking out of your chair. It doesn't, you don't even have to talk. It's not about talking so much. 
It's a oh, good question. I'll answer that in a second. It's not about talking so much to your client and like building the confidence that way. It's just simply how they feel when they're leaving your chair. Okay. All right. So the question here was how much tension am I using? So my tension is kind of, I would say at about 75%. Okay. So if you think about it that way, you think about it as a percent, as if I was going to come in and I was going to flat iron her hair completely. My current tension is sitting at about 75%. And you can see now, as I bring her around, look how nice she's looking. Look at the body that we're getting inside of there, huh? Looks really good. Okay. So now we're gonna hit the back. Tilt her head down a little bit. Uh-oh, she's getting loose. There we go. Tilt her head down just so I can get a little bit easier access to this. Now with that bottom section, you know, where we cut that hair pretty short, right? So that hair is pretty short right there. Maybe you just need to give it a little bit of this, right? So don't think you need to create rocks in every section because we are trying to get a nice, strong finish, you know, a nice, strong shape from the underneath. So that first section, you can just give it a little bit of love like that. Now, as we go to this next section and the hair gets a little bit longer, we're gonna come in. 75% tension, okay? As if I was, com compared to if I'm straightening someone's hair, I've got about a 75% grip. Gonna come in and just give these this nice little rock. Next section. And you see how fast behind the chair you can work. Remember, you know, this look is lived in. So if you overdo it, you don't need to overdo things. It's just about, working this iron through the hair. Now we've prepped the hair because the healing oil has, you know, properties in it that will protect the hair up to at least 500 degrees. So we know that our, that our iron goes up to about 415. That's one of the things I like about the GHD is that it hits 415 and stays steady. It doesn't go up, down, up, down like a lot of flat irons do. It hits that steady, that steady heat gauge and just stays there. So you're not getting one section too hot, one section too cool. It's a nice even heat. Now, we've got the right product in there to support our, our heat use, right? So we've got that with our healing oil, and so we don't have to worry about it. I'm not somebody who uses a lot of, like, quote-unquote, like, heat protectors. I feel like a lot of them, you know, have, um, have like, an alcoholic feel to them, and what that does then is it makes the hair feel a little bit drier, in my opinion, and I want that hair to be pliable, soft, basically, you know, like, I woke up like this kind of hair. Right, and I think that that's one of the most important things. And what people are looking for, they want to, you know, if you look at all those Instagram bobs and things like that, I mean, people just want that kind of lived in, messy look. And now she can go ahead and wear this style for, you know, three or four days and just work it through, you know, what it does, right? Work it through the patterns of, of what the style creates. All right, so let's get her in the right position for you to see. All right, she's getting a little, she's enjoying that. Okay, so now we've got our lovely model here. So now I'm gonna come in. How many of you guys like dry texture spray? Uh, uh, I'm gonna use a little bit of the Lanza dry texture spray here. And one of the things, you know, when you're applying product, like a lot of people I see, they get real product heavy because they're spraying or putting product way too close to the hair. So you'll notice, like I stand a good, I put a lot in, but I stand a good foot and a half away, you know, when I'm going through and I'm putting this dry texture spray in because I want the, the product to be able to dissipate onto the hair. I don't want this high concentration of product somewhere. It's like when you're doing a, an event style or something like that um, and, you know, you get little wet spots in it because you have put your your hairspray, you know, too close, right? So we're trying not to put things too close. We want to be able to use the product at a distance and allow it to, you know, kind of like fall onto the hair as opposed to just shoot into the hair, right? We want it to fall onto the hair. Like so, put the fringes a little bit from the underneath. Okay, good, now we've got it. Now we're just going to come in and tress her a bit, juice her up, sit down. Am I in the way? No? Okay, good. 
come in. Oh, wow. Look at how great she looks. So now we talked about it. We don't want to use a super wet spray. So I'm going to use right here my brush through uh, keratin healing oil spray from Lanza. And I'm just going to lightly, you know, just give it control where we need it. You know, probably the fringe is always a good place to add a little spray, maybe in the crown a little bit just to get it. But you notice again, you guys see the distance at which I'm holding the hairspray from her, right? I'm allowing that hairspray to fall onto her and not just clump on her or shoot in a direct path. All right, so a little side view, okay? You guys can see we've got these nice internal layers, but we haven't lost our strong shape. And I think that's one of the most important things when you're cutting these kind of like modern bobs is that you can't lose the strong shape sitting on the bottom. And if you start doing like vertical graduation or you start cutting off the top of her hair and things of that nature, what you're gonna notice is that you're losing the shape. So no longer are you creating this like heavy kind of like swing bob, if you will. You're starting to create these kind of overly layered, you know, graduated bobs instead of this heavy swing bob. So give you a nice straight on view. I think she looks awesome. Woo, what do you guys think? Good stuff? Yeah? All right, so real quickly, you know, I'm not on Facebook, but if you wanna catch me, I am on Instagram. It's matt.swinney. Um, I'm there all the time. If you got any questions, whatever. And thank you guys so much for joining. Remember, if you are in the States suffering from this COVID and you are getting your stimulus check, uh, of 600 bucks, remember to put a third of it away because they will tax you on it later and it's just not being talked about and it's something that can really, you know, hit you at the end of the year when you're just like, oh my God, I didn't even know. Just remember, put a third of it away and be ready to pay taxes on it. Um, other than that, I wish you guys all the best. Much love to my hairbrain community. Thank you for having me today, my Lanza family, and I'm just so honored that I could be a uh, part of your day. And thank you guys for tuning in. And yeah, Matt.Swinney on Instagram. Check me out. Until next time, peace.